Supreme Court will decide whether or not to ban the practice of female circumcision or not. The top court questioned why should the bodily integrity of a woman be subjected to a religious practice. Earlier in court, the centre had also supported a complete ban on religious practices in certain communities which allow female genital mutilation. In fact, Mirror Now correspondent Disha Shah spoke to one such woman who has undergone this brutal procedure. Listen in. I was taken uh, to a lady's house, an unknown lady's house in uh, uh, the Bindi Bazaar area of Bombay, which is where a lot of our community lives. But uh, when we got there, um, I was just, you know, I was asked to take off my underpants and, uh, you know, people were holding me and uh, all that I got by way of preparation was my mother telling me, you know, this is just going to take a very little time. Uh, it's not going to, it's going to hurt a very little bit. Don't worry. So, you know, people were holding me down and some lady was there and she took something sharp, which I'm guessing was some sort of a razor blade or some other blade. And uh, uh, she, you know, cut me down there and it was really painful. I remember uh, crying. I don't remember whether there was any blood, but my mom says that she you know, made sure that a very thin layer of uh, skin was removed. Uh, and of course at that age you don't know what all of this is about and uh, it was just about the pain at the time. And now you know that what kind of the situation that you really went through and now you now we really know the meaning of it. Do you really feel agitated and angry about this? I mean definitely that anger and indignation uh, is not going to go away and uh, that has fueled me to become an advocate for the end of this practice. Uh, and then over time, I, you know, I learned and understood that this is not, you know, the fault of my mother as an individual. Uh, this is something that everyone in the community is doing. It's part of, uh, you know, a certain uh, culture. It's part of uh, something that people have been, you know, uh, through tradition, they've just been, uh, you know, wired into doing because it's just that's how social norms work. And at the end of the day, just like menstrual taboos or, you know, so many other regressive social norms, this is a regressive social norm. Uh, you have gone through this uh, and you I'm sure that you don't want anyone to go through this. So what is your appeal at this point? Um, uh, so my appeal is more to the community because, uh, you know, Sayo believes that it's the community uh, that uh, that needs to collectively understand that for the well-being of all the girls it's just uh, necessary that this practice ends because uh, it's been going on for far too long for too long women have been unable to talk about how this has affected them and now people are speaking out however there are few other women who are in support of this practice and their justification is age-old traditions we spoke to some of the supporters of the practice take a listen are you supporting this and if yes, how can you support as far as you know the such a human practice is concerned? Uh, see, um, first of all I'd like to say that a female circumcision or cubs uh, that my community practices is uh, entirely harmless. To be, I mean I, I don't accept the term inhuman when it comes to female circumcision or cubs. It is, it is one of our religious tenets and uh, part, it, it is a part of the upbringing of a child. Like parents why would they be inhuman to their children? I would not say it's inhuman or it should be banned. Because ban us cheez ko kiya jata hai, which is extremely harmful and uh, you know, kisi se, us, jiska, jis se us, kisi ka bohat nuksan hota hai. But I, being a personal, uh, you know, part of following a certain religion or just, you know, it's a, we follow it and what our religion is, it will not, you know, it will not promote such things that are inhuman and will harm some children. And we are such a progressive community, educated uh, women. Uh, we believe in educating our daughters and, you know, sending them, sending them into the world, you know, in, in power with men. So why would we harm our daughters? I don't think that's right. And, uh, ban is absolutely not acceptable.
Well, so this is a 14th century custom and the matter would be heard uh, in the Supreme Court on the 16th of July is what we're given to understand. But to understand the magnitude of uh, of this issue, Disha Shah is now joining us. Uh, Disha, first of all, take us through the magnitude of this issue and to what extent is it is it still existent in our society? Absolutely. First, for our viewers, it's very important to know what this female circumcision is, uh, Urushi, because at this point in time, it is very important because this happens in one particular community. Community, uh, you're in India, especially the uh, Daudi Bora community, where essentially this uh, female circumcision is that it is a practice which involves cutting off uh, the clitoral hood be it either partially or totally so this is the practice that has been going for years and years now especially uh, of this community is what we understand and this happens at the age group of six to seven years of uh, age especially when the uh, when the children are young uh, and especially when they are six to seven years of old at that point in time we did hear uh, the two so uh, the survivor talking to us about how the experience was nobody questioned because this is what has been going for years and years now and this is what ha is the argument right now which is going on in the supreme court as well urvashi yes. so here of course uh, cutting off uh, a private basically a part of the private part is something which is not acceptable which should be banned and this is what the entire petition is all about uh, in the supreme court as well and here we know for the fact uh, that the in the in this particular community they also term is at cuffs uh, which is also known as female circumcision so mm -hmm. according we did uh, see we spoke to both the sides we of course spoke to the supporters as well who say that it has been happening it is part of their religion yes. it is part of their tradition and mainly why they do is because it is to curb sexual desires in a woman and that is the reason they do this at a very mm -hmm. early age and uh, they that's the reason they do it for cleanliness for spiritual religion uh, religious beliefs all of this is the justification that the supporters of this community are giving but at the on the other hand, we are seeing that in most of the places, people are have now come out and have started talking openly about it. They want this practice to be banned. In India, it is not banned yet. And that is what the petition is all about. Last year, it was filed in the Supreme Court. And now what we understand is the fact that the centre right. has even re reacted positively to it and uh, they have accepted the petition to seek the ban on this entire practice as far as from this community is concerned. And on 16th of July, the Supreme Court once again will hear in a detailed manner as to why this practice, uh, why this practice should be banned, what are the, uh, you know, what is really harmful for women out there because they really do not question them when, when it actually right. happens to them absolutely absolutely we will we'll of course uh, uh, see whether the arguments that have been put in by the community here which continues to practice uh, this particular uh, uh, continues to practice female circumcision on whether or not those arguments that have been put forth by this community holds any weight once the case uh, is heard by the top court. Uh, Brinda Adike now joining us on the phone line. Brinda, the argument that's been put forth by the community is that this practice should be allowed because con constitution guarantees religious freedom and several other arguments have been put forth by the community. It's, it's uh, 2018 now, this is a 14th century custom that continues to be prevalent in various communities. What we're also given to understand that several literate communities as well, literate people also indulging in such practices. Uh, how, how do you respond to that? Absolutely unacceptable. Religious freedom is a constitutional right and it is talking about spirituality. It is talking about some social customs and rituals that would probably enhance that spiritual experience. Certainly not mutilation. This is genital mutilation. Nothing less. Absolute violation. When we are talking of no violence on women physically, mentally, emotionally, this is all of it. It encompasses all of those violations that we are talking about. And we are not talking of women, we are talking of six, seven, eight-year-old young girls. And imagine the kind of trauma that they are going through. What spirituality will they gain? What spirituality does the person who is doing this 
cutting open cutting up that child gains nothing i think this explanation is absolutely utter nonsense unacceptable why we why they do it absolutely. we know we know why they do it there are science there is uh, research there are studies that have been done and there have been explanations made by of men from the muslim community it was for the men to feel additional absolutely but each pleasure. time each time a, a case like this comes up a petition is filed in this matter there is massive outrage within the community they have several arguments that they put forth but just just uh, one would like to understand the kind of uh, you know unity this community has and the kind of united opposition it comes up with each time a case objects to this practice uh, because so far nothing has been done to address this issue and that goes to show the kind of opposition that's come in each time around the practice is questioned all right uh, of course that case comes up for hearing uh, on the 16th of july and uh, we'll continue tracking developments there on the story for